Hey friends, is this you? If you're constantly trying to find that perfect kick drum sample, this is your video. I'm gonna lay out five unique ways that you can enhance kick samples with Ableton stock devices so that instead of hunting and skimming through a trillion samples, you can simply love, caress, and cherish the kicks you already have. Let's go. Okay, so let's take a listen to this horrible sample. Ugh. Floof. This kick drum has no attack. It would be very difficult to get this kick drum to break through a mix. It's not gonna work in modern production. So what do we need to do to fix this sample? Let's take a listen one more time. So maybe the first thing that you would do is you would say, okay, I want this kick drum to be a different pitch. So yeah, one thing you could do is always pitch a sample down. The original pitch of this sample is this. I kind of want it to be around this range. Negative five. So that's the first thing you would do. Maybe you would change the pitch of the sample. The next thing that you would probably do is be like, okay, there is no smack on this kick drum, right? There is no initial transient that would make it pass through or sound modern in a modern mix, okay? So the next thing we're gonna reach for is a compressor. So I'm gonna drag and drop a compressor under this sample. Now a compressor works by essentially reducing volume by a certain amount over time when the signal passes this thing, the threshold. So I need to pull this down. The more this threshold digs into the sample, the more volume will be reduced on the sample. So take a listen. A little bit, more, a lot. Now, at this point you might be like, well, how does this help us? It just makes the sample sound quieter. Well, the next thing I need to do is I need to turn the attack up. What is attack? Attack is essentially how long the sample will be able to pass through the compressor before the compressor does what it does. So if I turn this up somewhere between 10 and 30 milliseconds, I could add that much amount to the attack. So check this out. I'll say, all right, let's just go ahead and leave it on 20 and see what happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and AB the result thus far. So this is without it. Floofy crap. This is with it. Sounds like we're getting somewhere, but it's just made the sample much quieter. And you might be like, well, this isn't an enhancement at all. Well, the next thing we need to do is we need to go over here to session view. And if you can't see the long bars, you need to hover over here till your mouse looks like that, click and drag up. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to volume match the original sample's RMS level than with the compressor engaged. Okay, so here's without it. Let's take a look. If you see the bright green line, see that bright green line right there? it's going up to about negative 11. Now with the compressor on, look at the bright green line. We're lower than negative 18. So essentially I need to add makeup gain to make this the same RMS level. Then we can make an educated decision as to whether this compressor is doing us a favor or not. You always have to volume match a compressor. Okay, so now we're gonna start to bring this up. Okay. All right, now we're starting to reach that same level. Looks like we needed about eight decibels. Now I know that I've clipped over here, but don't worry about that for now. So let's go ahead and AB this compressor now that we've volume matched it. So without it, with it, yeah. Okay, so what have we actually accomplished here? We've actually added eight decibels of gain to the first 20 milliseconds of this sample essentially creating a nice, big, thick attack transient. So without it, and with it, blam. Now, let's address the clipping. So we're clipping over here on our master, and we need to control our dynamics. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach for our saturator. So Ableton Saturator has two different clip modes. We have analog clip and digital clip. Analog clip will have a little bit of a sonic signature to it, and digital clip will sometimes remain transparent depending upon the signal that's passing it. Now with this really fast, quick 20 millisecond attack that's causing our clipping, you are never going to hear a clip stage on top of that. So I'm gonna choose digital clip mode and I'm just gonna add one decibel to the front end and subtract one decibel from the output. Okay, so without it, we get that clipping. With it, Because the part of the signal that's clipping is so fast, you can get away with clipping the crap out of it. Cool, so we'll come back to this, but we're controlling our dynamics now. So let's keep enhancing that initial transient. So the next thing we're gonna reach for is a multiband dynamics. 
Now, multiband dynamics can be used in many different ways, but the way that we're gonna look at it today is upward expansion, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm only going to expand the treble aspect of this kick drum because right now there's not that much bright attack on this kick drum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the above mode and that deals with these three thresholds, okay? So we have the highs, the mids, and the lows. We're gonna focus on the highs, okay? Now, if you pull down on this compressor, this will change the ratio to make this compressor a downward compressor. That's not what we want. We actually wanna go the other way. So we're gonna go up until it says, 1 to 0.5. Now, in this situation, what a 1 to 0.5 dB ratio means in this specific situation is that for every decibel that goes in, two decibels are going to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling this threshold down until it crosses the sample. And what you're going to hear is you're going to hear the treble aspect of the attack go up, 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 up. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Bam. Listen to the uh, unbelievable difference here. Wow. Now, of course, we're still using the saturator and the saturator is helping us not clip. Look what would happen if I didn't have the saturator on. We'd be well into clipping. So this, remember, this saturator here is helping us manage that whole sound, right? Awesome. Now, you can go ahead and tune this if you want. Now, let's, let's say that this setting right here isn't what you want. You can also change the crossover frequency so you can get different sounds. As you pull this down, it'll have a little more smack Okay, it'll, it'll let more of the mid-range into this, and as you push it up, it'll maybe sound more high fidelity. So we'll start at 250 and go down first. We can hear that smack down there, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And as we go up, I kind of like that sound. It sounds like it has a little bit more fidelity. So again, without the multiband, with it, insane difference. Okay, so the next enhancement I wanna do is I wanna look at adding an overdrive. Now what's unique about overdrive is that it has this really interesting and useful bandpass filter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the dry wet all the way up, okay? I'll pull this down and what I can do is I can focus on frequencies that I might want to use to enhance this sample. So here's without the overdrive. Now remember, this is totally wet first, so I'm gonna turn it on. So now I can focus That's kind of a nice sound. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little more drive to it. Okay, now I'm gonna take the dry wet and pull it all the way down. So essentially the overdrive is bypassed. Now I'm gonna sneak the dry wet back in until I like it. Look at that, it only takes about 17%. Listen to the difference here. Right? This is such an awesome enhancement and a really cool thing that you can do. You can focus in on that frequency range you want and you can add some body or some character to that kick drum with it. Okay, so let's keep going on the idea of adding some distortion or character or saturation to this signal. And this time we're gonna grab an Ableton saturator. And this time we'll go ahead and use a more audible type of saturation and that's the soft sign mode. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some drive to this. And remember, I'm gonna pull the output down to try to volume match this with the original negative 11 RMS signal. Because remember, it's so important to test whether you are actually helping or hurting your sample by volume matching, okay? So without it, and now with it. Okay, so we've added some saturation, but it's very important with saturator to tune it. In this specific situation, I really don't like this sound. It's not exactly what I'm going for. But what's cool is you have this filter right here that you can actually use. And if you turn the depth up, you can you can do somewhat of notch filtering. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this filter up and notch out what I don't like about what this saturator is adding, okay? So let's listen as I do this. Okay, so that's a little bit better, but the next thing I wanna do is point the frequency in the place that I think that cut should be. I kind of like it right here at 450. I think that sounds pretty good. Now the next thing of course is to deal with the dry wet. So now this dry wet is all the way down. Take a listen. That's what we had before. Let's go ahead and bring up the dry wet.
Cool, so you can see that we're hovering around our negative 11 area. I might need to add a little bit more output here. That seems about right. Okay, so I think this is probably a good time to check in with the original sample. So I'll click on the compressor, hold shift, click on the saturator, and then hit command G. And what I've done is I've basically just grouped all these so I can quickly turn them all off or all on. So with them all off, this is our original sample. Ugh, so bad. I'll go ahead and turn this back on. Bam. Now, I haven't even touched an EQ yet. I haven't even dragged an EQ onto here. I'm essentially using dynamics, processing, and saturation to make this sample sound better, right? Unreal. So yeah, the more you know about processing sound, the less you have to waste your ears and your time flipping through samples. As you can see, Ableton comes with amazing effect devices that do exactly the same things that expensive plugins do. It's crazy how folks spend thousands on plugins when they could simply learn how to make use of what they already have. If you learned something from this video, I want you to know that I've got four different courses on Ableton Live. Songwriting and composition, mixing and mastering, sound design and synthesis, and live performance and looping. All four of these courses are deep and thorough with over 25 hours of video lessons just like this in each. So unlike trying to learn through YouTube, these courses give you an organized and structured series of educational content that I guarantee will be a turning point in your music career if you choose to join. You can learn more about all that over here and in the description and comments. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.